Hello. Okay. Today, I want to show you a few things about um, topology optimization or generative design or whatever people call it these days. There's so many different tools to do this sort of optimization to make these nice organic lightweight structures that I can't even remember all the names of them. And what's different about ours is that it's a very open platform in the sense that you can be taking results from any of the other tools and working with them in NTOP. And that's what I wanna to show today. So I have a result that I ran in a different unnamed topology optimization tool, and you can see what it looks like here. So we have this um, density field. I need to share my screen first. We have this density result here. Um, and you can see there's there's some vague resemblance of a cantilever beam hiding beneath the surface. This is just a way that we're viewing the data here. That data behind the scenes is really just a spreadsheet. So there's some spatial coordinates, X, Y, Z, and some density values. And that's all topology optimization really is for most of most of the codes available. So this would be a density-based topology optimization. But what do you do with a bunch of points in an Excel CSV file? You can't really go print the part, right? You have to do the geometry reconstruction. And that is where the real differences start to emerge. Uh, so in a lot of tools, you'll have to click Sculpt, and it will assist Sculpt you. Um, your surface, but in NTOP, as you know, that's all automated with our own optimizer. It's also automated with other optimizers, so check this out. So I've actually imported that spreadsheet that I just showed you, this one, and that comes into NTOP. Like everything in NTOP, it comes in as a field. So remember, our geometry is not stored as points, lines, edges it's stored as a continuous field. And all the simulation data that we work with is also treated like that. So it's a perfect one-to-one -one, um, translation, really. So you can see that this, this cantilever beam is, is lurking beneath the surface. And with NTOP, you can make a workflow which will reconstruct that part. So. I've actually gone through a few steps here, commented it out, and I send this file out to all sorts of different people using all sorts of different generative tools, and they can run it with their results. So I took this mess of a point cloud result, and I got this very beautiful smooth result. It's actually that, it's actually that easy. But wait, there's more. I've, I always like to say that on, on demos. And the reason is there actually is a lot more. So generative design, what you're doing, you're taking a, a density field and you're thresholding it. You're picking a density where you want to say, this is solid, this is empty. There's more data there that can be used. And with NTOP, the beauty of NTOP really is that there is such a rich data set behind uh, all, the, all the geometry and all the physics that you use. So this density result is more than what you see. It's actually a whole bunch of other contours inherited from the density result. So we can use that data to start doing even cooler things. So we get this load path identification, which we've reconstructed. You could leave it at that but you could also use it to start doing things like driving a lattice density or driving one of these digital foam type structures. Now it gets even better too. So this is really where NTOP is unmatched. Obviously lattices were good at that, but uh, to then take a result like this and make it, the top up purists are gonna get angry here to make it hollow, which a lot of times people need, um, and then start to revalidate and re-optimize that part. That's again, something that we can do, which no one else can do. 
So making this hollow is is trivial, really, with implicits. But you'll notice that this wall thickness is not uniform. It's actually thicker over here. And the reason is that I linked up the stress result of that post-validation directly to wall thickness. Yeah, you can actually model with stress data directly. Let that sink in. So we're, we're using pascals and millimeters as if they're the same, really the same language. So it's, it's perfectly suited for doing simulation-driven design because it's all based on fields. So just to recap, I've taken a result from another optimizing tool. I've reconstructed it in a matter of a few seconds. And now I'm doing stuff which most like you couldn't even imagine doing in CAD, variably shelling something like this. Maybe we want to get really fancy and put in a, a variable lattice inside as well. Obviously, we need to revalidate all of this, but it's pretty simple to do that. Um, and you can even export it to a tool of your choice. Uh, so if we go here, you can see we've got all these different formats you can export to. Boom, very easy. OK, so that was maybe one of the fastest NTOP lives, but really it's because doing this sort of thing is so easy. So I saw there's some q and I'll just address that quickly. How do I optimize geometry for use in a, a CAD file? Step and STL are faceted. Yes, they are. So uh, you can export it as a faceted body, which isn't ideal. It's a graphics body, really. Um, but we also have step export, uh, which will be online in the next release. So um, look forward to that. So exporting this as a native CAD model is coming. Um, there's also a question, exporting as a density field. Yes, you can also do that. You can export this raw density field if you want to go and do some further analysis. But you can work with it as a native geometry type in NTOP. So maybe it's preferred to do that. OK, if you want to learn more about this, check out our website. And uh, feel free to reach out for a demo. We can do a deep dive on this. OK, thanks very much.